Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 95 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we need to hook up all of our new electrolyzers and see if they work all right. Enjoy. Well, let's get this purified water set up for each one. Well, actually, it's going to be kind of... might be a little busy in here, so we might want to make sure we can fit all these in here. Because we have to connect these, which I'm not sure the best way to do. Perhaps like this? Eh, unfortunately it's kind of... kind of messy. Let's do it on the bottom end. Well, it's kind of messy on this side too. Looks like it didn't actually need a power pole right there anyway. So let's copy... that right there. Then I guess we need to get rid of this, this, this. That power pole. That one. And then bam, we can put that in there. Okay. So now that they're connected at the bottom, we only need to hook up with one spot up top here, which can be anywhere that is convenient. Let's do that. And since this is running at the limit of the pump, it might be worth having some buffer tanks in here have the pump always going into the buffer tank. There we go, that should be filling up each one of these, it looks like it is. And the tank will be the buffer. Man, I really want this to be like right there. Can we make that happen? There we go. that up. Hook it with the pump. We'll say water has to be quite low. Let's say under 5,000 or about 20%. Then if so, it can turn on. So let's see how that works. It's filling it up. And stops. Meanwhile, all of these are filling up with purified water, getting all that ready. And we're going to have way too much saline water now. So we need to hook all these together. So we can just kind of go down here. There we go. And then let's send it to the base. Although I kind of want to line it up with these other pipes if possible. So let's uh, line it up right there. Make it look nice and clean. Line it up right there. There we go. It's kind of an awkward section right there, but that works. Now saline water is hooked up to the base. We should be full of purified water. Let's get every other setup hooked up then. Let's see, we can grab water from here. That's pretty good, but uh, buffer tank for safety. We need to hook that up, but we need a circuit network, so let's Connect it via some power poles. Same condition. Okay, we need more pumps. Lots and lots of pumps. Let's line these up. And let's see, let's let that run with a buffer tank. We 
need a circuit condition. It's going to be a bit problematic running it on these same power poles. At least we can use a green wire here to keep them on a separate network. So let's see if that works. And let's run two more pumps. Kind of want to place them as close as possible to these other ones. Just to keep it as symmetrical as possible. Let's create another little platform. Last one to fit. That one is going to need its own power pole. So let's just send the power pole between the pipe connections there. Okay. Let's run this final one. I suppose we could run everything on the same wire if we encoded the signal as something different. Uh, it would require kind of changing things up a little bit, but it would do it in a better way, a cleaner way than all these wires. Let's just do it that way. Let's disconnect these. So we need to encode this signal to be something else besides water. So to change signals around, we can use an arithmetic combinator. We only need one for each. So we come up here, we just kind of put it up top here, then hook a red wire going into it, and then a red wire going to the pole. So for input, we can just say each, there's only going to be one signal going into this thing, and multiplied by one, which will do nothing to the signal. But then on our output, we can change what we want the signal to be. Let's just say signal 1. So you can see how the input is 5.2k of water and the output is 5.2k of 1. That's really all there is to it. It's a pretty simple little thing you can do to mess with... Let's put a light right there. Pretty simple thing that you can do to mess with signals to make them uh, more convenient if you have a bunch of the same signal like we have here. So into the combinator, onto the pole, paste it, but instead we can say change it to signal 2. So now we have 5.2k of signal 2, and we can kind of do the same thing here as well. In, out, paste, and signal number 3. And there's actually no water in there, so there's no signal number three right now. And then we can connect all these on one clean wire. Going to the pump. And now we have our one, two, and eventually three signal to control each of the individual pumps. So this first one goes to one. And then we can do the second one is number two. Can we reach that? Yes, we can. So instead of water, we can just say, if you have signal one, less than 5k of signal one, you can run. And then less than 5,000 of signal two. And 5,000 of signal three. So let's get this connected. There, that's filling up. We can also go here to see what's happening with the three signals. It's looking good. So that's a single combinator way that you can simplify your signals. Now you, you might not want to do this across your entire base because seeing you know a bunch of A's and B's and ones and twos, you're like, what are all those signals? Uh, that can be a little confusing. But on the short scale, where it's uh, just this own little local thing here, uh, that can make a lot of sense. Just to Make things look a little cleaner. Okay, science is done. Did that chew through our extra copper? 
It did. Look at that. Copper is uh, slowly making its way down. This is a temporary measure. We might as well leave it hooked up for now. And how are we doing? <laughs> it's like, how are we doing on nickel? It's like, well, it's still there. We still have a lot of it because we're just going through steel very slowly. And that warehouse is getting fuller. Eh, right, well, just wondering, are we low on anything else? Well, not all the resources look like they're caught up. Well, let's start the next research. I think we're almost done with all of them. Yeah, we just got this last one here, and then that'll be it for the green science for character upgrades. Okay, so we should have water hooked up. Hmm, this actually doesn't reach right here. Does it not reach for all of them? No. Is it one short? Ugh. How are we doing on those plastic pipes? Have we been producing plastic pipes this whole time? Uh, let's see, we got 45k. Well, that's pretty clear. Wow. Actually, we do have a ton of pipes here. This would be a good application of a plastic pipe. Because it's uh, a little bit longer in reach, but... There we go. Well, since we're getting overloaded on plastic pipes, because that is now our new output, we should probably pick a bunch of them up and start using them instead of these uh, bronze pipes. Actually, another thing we can do, probably should save it until after at least we're done with acid, because this is kind of a setup of its own, is that we can have an, a bypass for what happens if we have too much plastic, what do we do? We can kind of burn off these byproducts rather than constantly making plastic we're having trouble consuming here because this is becoming a bit of a problem well if we made batteries if we started up battery production again we would slowly start using this plastic and look how blue that stuff is but they have a great underground distance which is uh useful in just using less pipes and i suppose it can upgrade the entire base but Kind of don't feel like that right now. Getting filled up on landfill. No sulfur. Yeah, we're consuming a bit of it. We've still got some left over. That's all the extra from the ore tier 2 sorting that we have. Just I put it in there so we can do something with it. But we could definitely use up plastic. It uses up lead too, which is a problem with rubite. Is rubite caught up? It actually has. So... Uh, I'm okay with starting this up again. How many do we have? 1.5k out of the... 12,000? <laughs> I don't know where we're gonna find room for all those accumulators. We got so many already, but... We'll deal with that when the time comes. Okay, so this setup should be good, except for electrolyzers. So now we can copy this. And get all this seeded. Looks like the base is falling behind on iron. So probably should stop the research then. Let it all try to catch up the best it can. There we go. It's probably going to take quite some time to seed here. And it is going to run a little bit. These pipes are going to fill up. Interestingly, they're both filled up with hydrogen. How did that happen? That is not correct. I do not know. Oh. Ah, this is hooked up to the wrong thing. Well, now it's not going to let me do it. That's a problem. Well, luckily the other ones aren't running yet. It's always annoying in Factorio when you have fluids mixed in the wrong place. Let's see. Let's build a tank. This is the easy way. Because then we can hook it up to a pump. Put a tank there. OK, 
kind of keep. See, now it's not letting me. But it says hydrogen. Well, we pick it up. It disappears. So is that all of it? Well, not quite. No, it still doesn't want to connect, huh? But it says it's the same. I don't get it. It says oxygen on both sides. Uh, well, there's another way. Let's do a flare stack. That'll make it disappear. Can we connect now? Nope. What about now? There we go. Disaster averted. All is right with the world again. Now we need to connect everything. I'm just going to use the old pipe since... Oh, I was going to say, let's use the old pipe since all the colors are the same, but... Let's use the upgrade planner here. To upgrade bronze to plastic. Bronze to plastic. We'll just do these ones on the end for now. Rather than doing everything. Different color pipes will connect to each other, so that's okay. It's so blue. How are we doing here? That thing is still going strong. So now we need to connect the rest of these here. Okay, that should all be hooked up. Of course, we're just waiting on the long process of producing all these electrodes because our base is also kind of low on resources, so that's going to take a while to produce all of those things as well. It's not just a question of filling all of these up, but the base needs to produce the resources as well. Well, one thing we can try to take care of is burning all of that hydrogen away. Our base does have other use for hydrogen, but as you can see, we're not using it as quickly as we are producing it, so we need to be able to burn it away. So let's calculate exactly what we're going to need to burn through all of that extra hydrogen. Let's go into Select Energy. Fluid Burning Boiler. Set it up to use hydrogen. and link it to the input of hydrogen. So we're going to need exactly 12 boilers. And a pump's worth of water. And then we're going to need three steam engines for each of these. I'm not sure how well that's going to work. Usually it's kind of wonky. But we can do a steam engine there. Oh, there we go. I don't think it worked last time, but it seems to now. When it's going, anyway. 6.4 megawatts of hydrogen being pumped out by this. It seems like a lot. Especially considering these electrolyzers uh, consume less than that. I thought I had the setting enabled to where they weren't quite so... Uh, low energy. Let's see if that setting is still engaged. This is expensive electrolysis mode is enabled. I don't know if something is uh, a little weird about that. Maybe. Or maybe hell mod's wrong. Could be. Because if it does produce 64 megawatts, that's more than this entire setup combined, which I don't think is the case. If it does, it does, but <laughs> that's the way we need to to do to get rid of hydrogen, so so be it. Okay, 
running low on steel here. This setup's actually getting pretty close to being fully set up. So let's grab some more steel. And now we have a power setup in mind. We need 12 fluid burning boilers and 36 steam engines. And where to put all this? Well, I suppose it depends on how big it is. Next to the water makes more sense than not being next to it. So let's see how much space it takes up. Well, actually, it's not like it's any different. What's going on right here? It's even got the latch attached to it. So let's just grab that. Kind of clean it up a bit and get rid of all this extra stuff. Can leave the latch where it is. This will actually fit pretty well right here. Will require sending the hydrogen kind of over here, but it should work. We can actually figure out the exact place the hydrogen would go based on this thing's location, but actually probably also should send this up to the rest of the base. Because we're going to need it. Where is the closest hydrogen hookup? Well, let's use these pipes here. And I'll just uh, line it up with the other ones. It's kind of annoying doing that because it doesn't have the same underground distance. We can kind of go underground right here. Follow this along. And I'll leave the distances the same just so it matches with everything. If we're truly replacing all the pipes then we'd want to increase the underground distance just so it's less likely to crash into or bump into when we're dealing with them. But I like them all being straight right now, so we'll just use the same distances. It's just a little annoying placing them one at a time like this, because it won't auto-drop in the exact spot it needs to, but... There we go. Hydrogen's hooked up there. We can kind of put it in here. And send it down this way to where the boilers will be. Then we can even kind of line it up properly. So something like this, ideally. And like that. Looks good. No, come back, light. Then we can kind of upgrade this real quick to the new pipes. I actually probably want to pick up that latch. Because we have four of them there, but we need to do another two sets. No, <laughs> we're out of bots. Alright, well, how are we doing here? Seems like the uh, drop distances aren't correct here where it's... They're all far and there's no nears going on in here. Is it doing that everywhere else, too? Yeah, seems like it. Well, kind of. I see. It's, it's fine on this one because they're on both sides. But it's not fine on this one. Okay, let's get this latch back in here. It's pretty straightforward. Let's see, let's hook that up there. Get that hooked up. And that hooked up. <laughs> that's a lot of action happening, but that's okay. I think there's going to be too many lights in here. Might have to kind of place them manually. Maybe something like that. And we need another tank in here. This will be connected to the same network as the other tank, so technically it's doubling the 
uh, capacity of the network as far as hydrogen is concerned. I guess it kind of misaligned this a little bit because of that, but... Let's send the power wire down. I believe we can just kind of hop along here. Yeah. And we'll skip by that because this isn't a power wire, so we can go straight into the logic here. And it's set up to turn on if hydrogen is over 20 and turn off if hydrogen is under 15. That way we have at least some hydrogen on hand for various processes, but... And looks good, it's slowly going up, so... This will work in tandem with the other setup. They'll both basically turn on and turn off at the same time. It won't be exactly at the same time, because they're not hooked up by the exact same logic to the same tank anyway, so these tanks will empty at different rates, but... It's good enough for our purposes. Let's see, that is still filling up. Well, if we've got some spare resources... We can take all of this slag and send it down to slag storage. Which we are starting to run out of room here. It's getting a little crowded, which is a little worrisome. But what can you do? It's going to be kind of an annoying, but we can do one space there and then one space here. Come up through here. Cross over. And then go down. And then this one will just be down here. So they won't be quite next to each other. And it won't be straight. Although it could be made to be straight without much effort. Yeah, I might have to move some of those belts to the other side if it gets any more crowded than that. Yeah, I was trying to save space by having this stuff be nice and close together, but perhaps it was too close. But I don't think we have that much more slag to really work with, so this might not be as much of a problem as it might seem. And then we have the yellow output that comes through there. I think that'll work. And filling up on slag because we don't have a, the way of getting rid of it yet. That our primary way of getting rid of it is through crystallizers. So since those aren't set up, we're going to be building up a little bit of slag, but that's okay. So there's where the two belts can go. This is going to be a slag generator in its own right. Another thing we could do is just create a different highway for slag. Instead of coming in through here to like go the long way around. Like up and down here. That would certainly be cleaner and less busy up here, but it would take more belts. Oh well. As long as it's working, it's working. So I don't want to make more work for myself than I have to. Hmm. We're actually building up on nickel again. It could be the batteries that are actually uh, building up all that nickel because of how much lead they use. So perhaps I should shut down battery production again. I was worried because of plastic, but it's like all this stuff is interconnected. So we overload on plastic if we don't make batteries, but if we make batteries, we overload on nickel. So problems, problems. But we can change that plastic setup to just uh, burn the byproducts rather than constantly making plastic, so... Let's see if we can handle that after we've got this acid set up. Now we need to store this oxygen. And we need to leave some space in the tank because we are producing oxygen through air separation for nitrogen. I don't think we have any of those setups right now, but of course we will in a second. And we've already got an oxygen tank here, set up with the top-up valve. So we can connect the two networks together and do the exact same thing with another tank right here, and the same thing will be in effect. So you space this up by one, put the top-up valve, and then let it go. And everything is going like nuts. At least the stuff that can go. I mean, what I can see is green. This is the only one that's actually completely hooked up. I mean, it seems fine. Of course, we're full up on oxygen already. 
No, that thing's in the way. Looks like we don't have oxygen down here either. So we'll just follow hydrogen. And that'll take us where we need to go. I believe we still need to hook up the mineralized water. Yeah, it is full. Luckily, though, mineralized water is hooked up. So we've got that in the system now. And how is this going? It's going. As much as it can be. It's weird how down here... Well, I guess uh, it was just filled up, because down here it said we had a lot of Miller's water, but I guess it just needed to uh, slosh through the pipes. Okay. Looking good. All these setups are seated. And everything looks pretty calm. It's not much is happening. Of course, this is way more than we need for our base. But this top setup does run a little bit. Because it's helping the base handle things that it needs to handle. But one thing we can do, which is fairly unique for our base, or at least our uh, playthrough here, is that this setup is now fully replacing the other setup. It's hooked up to the base. It's operating normally. It's now sending all of the slag to the east here as opposed to the west. That is all right, which means that all of this is redundant. We don't need it anymore, so we can pick it up and remove it. Might be nice to start to see the changes happen in the factory, where we haven't really been able to move any of this stuff because we haven't actually replaced any of these setups. We've been building new setups in the uh, base to the east. But we haven't actually replaced any of this stuff yet. Now that we have, we can shut all these down. Oh, I kind of regret building all of those uh, electrodes when there's more going to be right here, but oh well. We we'll might as well remove the logic here. Just let it run all the time, just to get rid of what's in there. I always like to try to save as many resources as possible. I know it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but let's temporarily disconnect these two sides to allow these tanks to run down. Well, I guess we can keep the hydrogen connected and instead put a pump in here to run it to the other side which is uh, pretty immediately start the other steam engines running. See if we can empty this tank out. Hmm. This setup should be going, but it's not. Why not? Oh, we never hooked up any water to it. Well, that would explain it. Well, luckily it's just uh, one pump here. That'll be kind of annoying that we can't walk through that gap, but oh well. And that's probably a ton of power. Yep. Pretty much took over the base. So hydrogen is cleared out. Gotta be really careful which uh, pipes we pick up here. Because there's kind of a lot going on. Well, there's the hydrogen hooked up again. And we are getting through the oxygen pretty good. So what parts of this can we pick up? Well, probably all of this. And probably... At least all of this. Let's get a power line over here at least for... the radar, which needs to stay there. Hmm. We have some... a stray wire. Yes, because this system was set up to run only if we had hydrogen. Because I don't feel like running an electric wire all the way down here just for this. Uh, let's just have an inline tank here. And that will hopefully balance out with that other tank. So we won't have to run an electrical line all the way to the other side. That'd be kind of annoying. It's always satisfying to see the factory sort of evolve here, that up until this point we've just been kind of expanding to the east, just expanding, 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 but now we're starting to see some uh, fruits of those labors where 
uh, systems we did build are now being replaced with others that are more efficient and or much larger. And eventually, ev pretty much everything on this west side of the base is going to be gone, because it's all going to be replaced. And we have some water treatment plants here as well. It was being used to purify water for the purposes of cleaning electrodes, but it looks like we also need some of it for making sulfuric acid, and I don't know exactly how many plants we're going to need for that purpose, so we'll just leave what's here and accept it that it's the right amount. It's probably too much, but whatever. Why is there a pump here? It must be to just help push resources along. Oh yeah, I think that's that's pushing it up to the farms, and it's just because it's so far away that it's easier to uh, have a pump right there. Looking pretty good, but we don't have any of the slag being delivered. So we can remove all of this as well. And looking good and clean. And now we can see this setup running very lazily, keeping up with our factory's oxygen needs. Yep, right around 20,000, which was where we want it to be. And hydrogen is slowly building up to about 20. Looking good, looking good. And that's the end of this episode. In the next one, we are going to start working on acids and use all of this oxygen we have now produced. I'll see you later.